Hello dear viewers, uh, after a long time I've been very busy with my work and I have finally got the time to put together a series of videos for you about the building of the wiring harness of the 4EGE. This is by far the most complex thing I have ever done in the electricity of a vehicle. I've only just made basic repairs and uh, I hope, hopefully the videos will not be uh, too much compli too, mu too complicated uh, for you to understand. A measure of how much a person understands about the subject is how simply uh, this person can explain um, to others how, how to make things work uh, in, this, uh, in this domain. At least I firmly believe in that. The more you know, the simpler you make things when you are explaining. So in that regard, uh, I hope uh, this will not be too complicated because I really am not a professional in wiring harnesses or any other stuff on the electrical work of the car. I hope these explanations make sense. Anyway, this is the first video. Uh, it covers basic stuff that you must watch be before uh, watching the other videos. If you are, uh, like myself, a DIYer and uh, uh, an amateur mechanic and electrician. I'm <laughs> now, I was just a, an amateur mechanic, now I'm also an amateur electrician. Anyway, uh, we have to make do with what we have. Let's start! You see, each wire has a plastic uh, holder. It's on this position here. This entrance here will signal the place where you have to insert your uh, needle or your thin uh, screwdriver. Press in there and then pull the wire from the other side, it will come out. No need to apply too much force or else you may damage the connectors. Uh, these are the numbers on the, real, on the relay face. And this match the layout of the pins that, uh, in which the relay sits. For example, there will be a pin over here in this region, underneath the, the relay. There will be a pin in the middle and then another one over here. And then another one on the edge. These numbers over here denote the functions of the relay. For example, the 4 and 3 um, relay pins on this uh, illustration, this is the power circuit. It means that the, it is the circuit that is activated when there is a small current running through the control circuits. I don't know if this is really the, the terminology, but the relay works like this. You have two circuits with different voltages and different um, uh, currents. Uh, for example, if you want to power a big appliance, like the, the starter motor, uh, when you turn the key, there is not any uh, high... The, the current for the, for the starter motor does not go all the way to the place where you have the, the, the on position and on the, the ignition switch. Only a small current, that's called the control current, um, goes to the key. When you turn on the key, there is a small current that passes through the ignition. Uh, that, in turn, uh, that small current goes to a relay, a part like this, that activates through induction, not through direct connection. There is a, a coil that activates through this, um, this control uh, circuit over here, when the key is switched on, for example, current, small amount of current passes through this circuit over here, which, through induction, in, underneath, the, uh, inside the relay, activates a coil that makes this switch close. This switch is the thick wire, usually, the, the powering circuit, through all the power goes through the la long appli large appliances, like, for example, the headlights, uh, all big, uh, big wattage uh, components are activated this way. A small current, uh, usually a switch, goes through a relay and turns on the power circuit, which then turns on the big circuit. Uh, namely, the bulbs, light bulbs, for example, starter motor, uh, whatever, big appliances. So, just so you know how relay works. You have to apply solder to both sides and then heat them up to bond them together. Uh, you can uh, remove the, you can strip the wire on both ends, you can open up the fibers uh, and then match the open fibers from both ends coat them with solder and this will intertwine the fibers of both wires making for a more durable connection than, is, than just soldering the two ends the two ends with the fibers all bunched up and as you can see 
this bond is uh, formed all around the solder becomes like um, a ball of solder all around and uh, it goes deep in, in the fibers to make a strong durable connection you can pull on it and it will, it will not break after you um, you finish soldering you have to apply some heat shrink to the uh, to the wires the heat shrink has already to be in its place so that you can slide it back in and then heat it up with a lighter So now we have a nice, well-insulated and durable connection for this wire. 